Hello and welcome to Five Questions with the Resilient Hairdresser. Today my guest is Vivian Johns, social media coach, and she is just a brilliant person. I absolutely love talking to her, she's so much fun. Um, I met Viv recently through Instagram and uh, we just hit it off and got us on like a house on fire and ended up chatting on the phone for about three hours. So I'm really looking forward to her today, talking to her today. And, you know, I have no idea what answer she's going to give to the question. So that's just going to be brilliant. Hi, Wendy. So Viv's here. Let's get her on. She's coming. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thanks. Well, I have to admit, I have a tiny bit of a hangover. Good for you. <laughs> Watching the BHAs last night. I saw you. Oh, my God. It was incredible. What, what a great experience. Yeah, I didn't watch all of it, I'll be honest. But I watched a little bit and I watched you guys watching it. Yeah, it was amazing. And obviously, you know, we are really, like, we're really connected to Craig Chapman because he's, mm -hmm. like, founder of Hair.com. Mm -hmm. So him winning Wales and South West is, like... Oh, oh amazing. Oh, So he won. He's, he's entered 11 times. Bloody hell. Yeah, right? So Oh, and, God. Got it, oh, right? I need to check the results out this morning and see yeah. who's won everything. Yeah. Some people I know were uh, in some categories, so I need to check that out. Yeah, it was lovely. So you had a party. Well, a party for one, basically. <laughs> <laughs> my, husband, my husband was like, right, I'm off to bed. I was like, with a bottle of wine, like, I'm celebrating. Bye. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've got a bit of a hangover this morning. and um, But, but you're here, uh, face but, on, hair curled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> I put a brighter lipstick on today because I thought Viv's going to outshine me with that red lipstick. I'll look like I've got none on. Do you know, even my children, when I'm not wearing lipstick, like, ask me where my lipstick is. Like, I've got <laughs> lipstick in the car, lipstick in every pocket. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I've, I've got mine here. Go. I have it next to me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I can put it on when I'm on the internet. It's like my thing. It's just my thing now. It is. It's you're getting known for it, red lipstick. You won't be able to change. I can't, I can't change it now. <laughs> oh, I don't want to anyway. No, it looks good on you. It looks good. Well, thanks for turning up with your hangover. I love hungover people. I really like hungover clients. I've got like, those weepy eyes, you know, the hangover <laughs> weepy eyes. I'm not yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. I find hangover people are really fun. <laughs> so I like it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just as I was introducing you I was trying to tell people a little bit about how we met and it's kind of funny really isn't it you know but I was saying we met through Instagram I think we both heard of each other I approached you about wanting to talk about social media and then we ended up on the phone for most of the day yes <laughs> we did like my phone was red hot on my ear. I was like how did we talk for so long but you know when you just meet somebody and you just have this instant connection. I think that's mm -hmm. what I That's I what I thought. I just thought, she's for me. Yeah. <laughs> thing, which is lovely. Yeah. It's brill. It's brill. So let's get going then with the questions. Let's, let's go for it. So question one, Viv. Have you ever experienced burnout as a hairdresser? So do you know what? This is really interesting. Simply because my initial reaction to that question was no. Mm-hmm. And then I thought back over my career and I was like, hang on, was that burnout? Mm. So what happened to me probably about seven years ago, I've had a series of very stressful things happen in the salon. We had a, a, another business partner in our salon who left and it just caused a lot of emotional stuff and financial stress. Mm -hmm. but I was also at that time in a really bad relationship like mm -hmm. really bad and mm -hmm. um, we ended up going to court it was it was a it was a horrible situation mm -hmm. very it was abusive that's the only way I mm -hmm. can say so but I have lived my whole life since a very very small child with high stress so I've always lived in mm -hmm. very stressful environments my my father now is a reformed alcoholic so my dad mm -hmm. is 
amazing. Mm -hmm. But obviously in my early years, that was, that was it. That was tough. And being the eldest of four, I was always the, the capable one, mm -hmm. the sensible one, the one who was able to keep it together. Mm -hmm. But I think I've just learned to live with a lot of drama and stress. Mm -hmm. So when you said that, you sent the questions through to me and I thought, no, I've never had burnout. And then I just remembered this one time where I was like, actually, when I got really sick, so all of this had happened with the business partner leaving, the financial struggles of the salon, the relationship and mm -hmm. how turbulent it was. All of that had come to a head and that was all done. And then I became really sick. Mm -hmm. I got what I thought was the flu. Mm -hmm. And I went to bed for, like I was in bed for 10 days or something. And mm -hmm. I was so poorly. I went back and forward to the doctor, like, what's wrong with me? Why am I not getting better? And they put it down to possibly, but they couldn't, it had gone too far. They didn't know for sure whether it was glandular fever, but they said that they think that that's probably what it was. Mm -hmm. I ended up not getting better for three months. But when I actually look at that and I think, was I sick or was I completely burned out? Yeah. No, it, the words burnout, I've only heard them recently. Yeah. You and know, it's, yeah, I think people don't know what it looks like. And I think it looks different for everyone. Yeah. You know, because I did recover from the illness, but then mm -hmm. I recover, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm super tired. I, if I walked to the shop, I'd like have to have two days recovery. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. it, that, it was mm -hmm. sheer exhaustion. Yeah, total fatigue. But I think also um, part of burnout is emotional fatigue. And no sleep in the world will fix that, yeah. you know? And it's like, I, I believe that if you don't pay attention to burnout, your body will make sure you do, you know? That's so for me, my back will go. It will make sure that I take a rest because I will become unable to work. And, I, you know, you could say, I wonder if that's what happened to you. Your body was like, you need a break. Yeah. And well, so it gave you one. Yeah, it did. But because it wasn't... You know, because I didn't, there was, there were no words. Like I said, burnout wasn't, this is only seven years ago. It's not that long ago. So was burnout even recognized or, I ne honestly, I've yeah. only, what did we I, used to call it? A nervous breakdown? Maybe. Is maybe. That, maybe. <laughs> That's true. That's the words that you used to hear, isn't it? Somebody you know, I, yeah. Break. Mm -hmm. that's the words I remember my mum using yeah. for people oh, they've yeah. had a nervous breakdown and yeah. I suppose what it means is I mean I think about burnout like this it's when you actually become unable to carry on your normal daily responsibilities you know yeah. maybe you take to bed you can't work you know yeah. like it's your body makes sure you take a break that's how I think about burnout yeah you know I think there's a road to it and then I think you hit it when you can't carry on as normal. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for me, that was definitely all wrapped up in this illness. What, whatever. Mm -hmm. But what it, was, it, was it a really bad flu? I think it was a really, really bad flu. And yeah, I think it totally can be. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you uh, know, I, I think that the illnesses are real. I just yeah. think, I always used to think this when I, when I was a therapist, I was taught this. If you don't listen to your body, it will start shouting. Yeah. You know, first of all, you'll get a cold all the time, but then eventually it will send in the big guns, you know, and it will put you in bed. It will yeah. make you have a rest. Yeah. And so I always think that physical illnesses are very much tied up with mental fatigue. For sure. And I think now we understand that better, don't we? Mm -hmm. I think we're so much more tuned into mental health. You know, yeah. it was um, something to be really embarrassed about years ago. I mean, I remember, I mean, I went into therapy, I don't know, 10 years ago, say. And, you know, I didn't tell everyone because it wasn't that normal then, you know, when some people would have been quite judgmental. And I didn't spread it around that I wasn't just like, my, you know, now I'll say things like my therapist said. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have done that then, you know. It was much more shameful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I completely, completely agree. Like us as in the UK and Ireland, we're definitely like about therapy, aren't we? And we used to all be all very sniffy about the Americans and how they're all in therapy. <laughs> but yeah. now I'm like, 
God, they've got their stuff together, haven't they? They're onto something. <laughs> yeah, but I think there's it, in life you have to learn skills, whether mm -hmm. it's how to cut hair or whether it's how to manage your life or mm -hmm. whether to drive a car. Um, and therapy can come into that, I'm, I'm sure. I no. like that it's become no. more the norm. You know, I find people talk about it now and I like that. Yeah. I thought something that was I really think, interesting. Sorry. I no, think you go. The younger gen generation for that. Yeah, bless you know, them. People shame the younger generation mm -hmm. for being open about mental health issues and things mm -hmm. like that. We should, as the older ones, say thank you. Yeah. You know, thank for you for sure. bringing, and talking about it more because mm -hmm. we didn't. And I think bless social media for that because I think the reason these kids have got the confidence to talk is because they found like-minded people through social media to connect with and we didn't yeah. have that when we were young you know you just had your mates and that was it whereas now you can connect with people all over the show and find your tribe I like to think okay. yeah so we love that for that what I was going to say uh, what I thought was really interesting was how you described growing up in high anxiety and I think that's true me too actually and um I think if you I like to say if you live on DEFCON 3 all the time, how do you notice when you're stressed? Yeah. You know, like, it's a bit like saying the bar was already set pretty high, so you've got to go a long way before you even notice that this might be a problem. Because yeah. it's normal. Totally normal for me to live with drama. Mm -hmm. Totally normal. And I think that in some ways, without it, I probably looked for it. Do you think that you thrive off chaos? I've had thoughts that I thrive off chaos. Yeah, I've only learned to step away from that in recent years. Like okay. since I met my husband, really, where, where I, you know, met him and I was like, wondering whether he might be boring. And then I was like, it's not boring, it's so nice. Like, yeah, he's secure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what security looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, you know, just... I, I definitely looked for it for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always mm -hmm. looking for that kind of high level of something. Mm -hmm. And I think hairdressing can really give you that drama, can't it? You know, I think yeah. hairdressing's less dramatic for me in my forties, but in my twenties, hairdressing was dramatic. You know, yeah. I was working in a great salon with lots of other dramatic twenty-year-olds, and we were partying. You know big time and the drama you know I was always working with a hangover that's hard um, and you know just the day-to-day -day, but I think I thrived off it and I think it was a distraction from uh, my real issues was yeah. just to be busy and chaotic yeah and so I think I think hairdressing can really hide that stuff for a long time yeah and you get with with hairdressing as well you get these like small bursts of therapy with some clients don't you wait mm -hmm. Like, you know, so you can have the drama, 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 and then you have that one person who pops up in the day that you can, like, talk to. And mm -hmm. um, I listened to, I think it was your podcast you talked about this, like that oversharing. Mm -hmm. I've definitely done that. I've oh, definitely, God, yeah. Because I was probably looking for some somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. So I've never done therapy, probably should have many, many times, because I obviously definitely offloaded and overshared with, clients who yeah, then me believed, you know because they they don't want to hear all of your stuff or or maybe they just want to come and have their hair done and then you feel like you have this open relationship with them mm -hmm. tell them about what's happening with your boyfriend and mm -hmm. they're like my mm -hmm. like <sighs> it just sets up a, a weird unhealthy dynamic I think doesn't it you know that lack of boundaries and not right it's not what they're there for no, it is. It's, it's you know, um, my therapy supervisor used to say, don't get your needs met through your clients. Mm. Uh, and that was when I was a therapist, but I think it stands up as a hairdresser. Don't yeah. get your personal needs met through your clients. You know, if you're, if you're looking for more deep conversations, you've got to go find them in your life. Yeah, yeah. And, and not put it on your clients. I find that really interesting when you spoke about that, because I thought, oh, <laughs> Oh, that's me. It comes that. up in coaching a lot. It comes up a lot. Uh, and it comes up particularly for people who work on their own. You know, if you work in quite a small salon or, you know, you're mobile or just in a studio or whatever, you're way more likely to have these big, deep chats. Mm. But I think it adds to, you know, it adds to the exhaustion of the day, holding that sort of stuff. 
yeah you know hairdressing's hard you don't have to be a therapist on top yeah that's exactly it so you go home you're exhausted you probably went in with your hangover there's drama going <laughs> in your life then you're offloaded in a big mass conversation with mm -hmm. the client really all you need to be talking about is mm -hmm. the weather and then you get overshare hangover yeah and then you go home more exhausted so you look for again another bottle of wine or mm -hmm. night out or whatever and mm -hmm. it's repetitive cycle mm -hmm. which i'm glad to say i'm not in anymore i think you do grow up i think we've learned the hard way but i'd like people to learn in their 20s and not have to learn the hard way yeah you know that's what i would like this sort of thing to be really talked about in colleges yeah. You know, and talked about from the older stylists so that the young ones hear it and think, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I sort of think it's about lack of boundaries, isn't it? And right. I think that professionalism is what protects us as hairdressers from this sort of thing. If you keep those professional boundaries, I think um, you're less likely to burn out. Yeah. When I started hairdressing, I worked for Tony and Guy. Me too. And you did as well, didn't yes. you? Yes. Tony and Guy girls. And we both we were both working in Tony and Guy in the 90s, weren't we? And mm, was, in the heyday. Yeah, it was amazing. It really mm. was. But if you look back at that environment, that and I'm sure it was exactly the same for you, but I'm sure like the environment was we were all very, very young. Mm -hmm. The manager was 22 or or which isn't isn't like unrealistic to think of if you go into hairdressing at 16. Yeah, you could absolutely be managing a salon by 22 or 24. Of course. Experience. You know, you've been in mm -hmm. the industry quite a long time. But because we were all that age, there wasn't somebody, there wasn't somebody that you could go to and there wasn't a mentor or, or somebody who had your back or somebody older who could kind of guide you. Mm -hmm. All very, very young and all no. in that cycle. Just in it, having a great time. I mean, I think to myself, when I think back at that time, it was one of, it was like the best of times and the worst of times for me. Mental yeah. health wise, I was struggling. Uh, but when I look back, I was having a fabulous time as well. Yeah. You know, and I think I was just dealing with my problems through partying. Yeah. And, and I, but I was having a good time, you know, yeah. I really was. I look back fondly, but I also know that that was one of the worst times for me. Yeah, in my head. It'd be great for younger people to have somebody like you or somebody who's trained to look after the young people in the industry in their mm -hmm. time. Um, like a mama hen. Yes. Yeah. You know, almost like you have a, self, you have a health and safety officer. You yeah. Know, we need a mental health officer. You know, just someone who at least can point. I mean, I do have a salon that uh, they kind of employ me to do that. They're yeah. so forward thinking, you know, you know, uh, in Lytham, yeah. right. they basically employ me to do that. You know, yeah. their staff get to check in with me. And if anything big comes up, they get the option to talk to me for longer or yeah. I point them in the direction of the right place. Yeah. So hairdressers are getting onto this and there are some brilliant bosses who are, um, you know, clocking onto this stuff. Yeah. I'm laughing at some of these comments. Can you see them? <laughs> Going up the screen. There's just loads of people. Can you move? I don't, I'm terrified to touch things in case I turn I'll, things I'll, off. Can you move I'll, them? Too, but Everyone, on. loads of people saying, I'm Exonian guy. Loads of people saying, um, oh God, oversharing. That was me. And then I saw someone say, you two are describing my life. I think when we were talking about the 90s. Yeah, the 90s were great, but were they great, really? <laughs> swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. That's why I think. So, um, so that's so interesting, really, that I think, I like that your first response was, I've never burnt out. And then you were like, hmm. And I think that's the reason I send people the questions ahead of time is so because I think the answers are so much more interesting if you think about it. Because if I'd have just asked you that, you'd have gone, no, I no, I don't think so. No, and it wasn't really until this morning when I looked back over it again and I was thinking, I really don't think I have. Like, I genuinely didn't think I had. And then I was like, yeah, actually, hang on. Was that? Yeah, it? that wasn't great. Words for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I couldn't get myself back together to go back to work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing. It's that absolute end of the road. Yeah. You know, but, we're not pushing through anymore. It's done. Yeah. 
but I, I led myself into an even worse world, really, because what happened then was I didn't go, I didn't recognize what was happening. If that was burnout or a nervous breakdown or whatever it was, or maybe I was just really sick, but I didn't deal with it. And what ended up happening was I let post pile up at the door like this high mm -hmm. point where it was like I wasn't going on paying my bills. Mm -hmm. I just was absolutely disconnected from every part of my life. I couldn't mm -hmm. bear. To... Like needed a break from I... life. I just want to get off. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. led me down an even worse spiral because I'd fallen behind on bills that needed to be paid and you know then like you get yourself into a situation where you're like this is the worst situation you could ever be in I, I it's just... even harder to go back because you're making more of a mess you know you're mm -hmm. allowing mess mm -hmm. to actually consume my life mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. eventually I did go back to work but I went back to work not really because I was ready because I was so felt so guilty mm -hmm. you know I was back because because I had no real reason to still be off. Um, I was- No real reason. <laughs> yeah, better. I don't think I was. And I think that like, like I said, it wasn't really until I met my husband that I started to, to feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, to feel more in control or like life wasn't spiraling out of control. I got back on top of all of those bills and debts and things that had all mm -hmm. spiraled control and or oh, really without any help I just did it like one step at a time mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it sounds like you had a real calming influence come into your life at the right time yes yeah absolutely uh he sounds great <laughs> he's a keeper he is an absolute keeper <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting him go yeah so definitely I mean it's it's I've I've always been one of these people who's like you don't need a man to come and sort you out. But it, it wasn't necessarily that that happened. It was just that he helped me have a bit of, having somebody to have my back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, in fighting in my corner. When mm -hmm. I felt like maybe for years I hadn't got somebody mm -hmm. fighting. You mm -hmm. know? So yeah, I do. I get this. Supported or like kind of got, I've got something that's, you know, for me, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. which, well, I think it gives you permission to put your boundaries in place because someone's going, no, that's all right, that you should do it. Exactly. exactly. Instead of just sitting there thinking, oh, what will people think? You know, mm -hmm. someone's like, no, you do that. You yeah. do that. Yeah. That's good for you. That's oh. a, and that confidence, just having somebody to just confirm mm -hmm. that you're right or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. right. yes. Mm -hmm. God, I like it. That's great. Because I was going to ask, how did you get out of it? But it's like, oh, it was well, a combination of one step at a time and you had support. You developed, probably it sounds like, great support for the first time. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And maybe he was a great, uh, good at modelling good behaviour. You know, well, like sometimes you have to see someone who's good at looking after themselves to go, oh, that's what it looks like. No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> We met we met both at a critical time in both of our lives so he was struggling with his own issues as mm -hmm. well I think I th he didn't come to me baggage free that's for sure like he had big big stuff going on in his life too and together maybe looking at him I just helped him and he helped me mm -hmm. yeah maybe it was easier to do it for somebody else yes Definitely. And he was like, oh, I'm good at doing for other people as well. And then, you know, but together you decided to get it together. It sounds nice. It sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that happened for you. Me too, because God knows where I'd be now. That what sounds brutal. <laughs> yeah. So I'm reading a couple of these. I love the idea of a salon mentor for the younger generation. Me too. Yeah. I'd really like that sort of thing. But yeah. yeah. Because we, we can nominate somebody as like, fire officer don't we or or like we put somebody yeah. on a health, like a health mm -hmm. and safety course to learn mm -hmm. how to ban someone's mm -hmm. knee mm -hmm. what about yeah that? i think this is where it's going i i like you know um in my positive brain i like to think this is where it's going the hair industry is becoming much more aware of the mental health of the staff and 
you know so i like to think this is down the road for us yeah i think so <laughs> me too cool so question two what's the moment everything changed for you in your career okay so again like for everybody i'm sure there's many many moments isn't there mm -hmm. I but think so. yeah, i had a good think about this and it is great that you send the questions ahead of time because i'd probably pick something that wasn't that relevant mm -hmm. if if i didn't have time to think about it but yeah. for me the moment that everything changed for me was when i made a video audition and sent it to the Kerastrate Collective. Like literally. Amazing. Yeah. So I obviously been hairdressing for a really long time. And I thought, I saw, I'm a big fan of Tom Connell. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I love him. I really respect him. I just mm -hmm. love him. And I saw that the Kerastrate Collective were working with Trevor Sorby and Tom Connell mm -hmm. to, to put together this art team. Mm -hmm. And Tom Connell was going to be the mentor. And I've, all, and I've always loved his work. So I was like, I want to be mentored by Tom Connell. Like, I mm -hmm. want to do this. And what you had to do is you had to make a video of you talking and saying why. <laughs> why? I've never done something like this. Well, when was this? What year are we talking? That long ago. So we're only talking um, last year, I saw. Oh, okay. It was early 2019. Yeah, it was probably like... Just before lockdown. <laughs> No, no, the year before. Oh, okay. In that year before. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, you had to do this video telling why you think you should be on the team. Mm -hmm. That in itself is really hard because when you're not used to talking about what you've got to offer, mm. when you're not used to actually putting your face on a camera and then uploading it onto your Instagram for other people to see and to judge yeah and so were you not doing that sort of thing at the time because no. you do that all the time now all the time now daily I, all the time i'm <laughs> you turn on instagram you're gonna see my face <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i've never done anything like that before so mm -hmm. i um did it i literally i went I, one evening in the salon i set up the ring light and i think i must have been for like four hours tried to deliver this video and i can imagine <laughs> hard because what, what what why do you think you should be on the team because i'm great and yeah. what, what i mean tom my connell. grades are good <laughs> <laughs> but i really like tom connell but like so just even just so i had to make this video and then had to upload it onto my own instagram so making the video was the hard bit oh. really uploading it onto my own instagram for the world to see the world that you're going for this job oh no that, that's terrifying <laughs> yeah really really hard when you've never done something like that before mm. and one of the things i always say to everybody when they're doing my courses is talking to the camera is going to elevate you mm -hmm. in the industry mm -hmm. and i know that because it's true because it has happened for me mm -hmm. and the first time you try and do it it is so so hard and yes, to put that onto your Instagram and show all of your friends and family and show all of the other hairdressers who follow you and, you know, your hairdresser friend down the road and your hairdresser friends who've left and opened another salon that you are going for this thing. And mm -hmm. the thought process in that for yourself is everybody's going to think like, what is Viv doing that? Like, as if she's going to get it. Who does she think she is? Who does she think she is? Like, She's a hairdresser in Penzance, like, come mm -hmm. on. If she is going to get that. Mm -hmm. That's what you think everybody thinks. Maybe they do. Does it matter, though? I also think people are not paying that much attention to other people. No. You know? It's all in I just head. think they're not. People are very obsessed with themselves in the nicest yeah. way. You know, they're yeah. very focused on what they're doing. They're, they have, they'll might go, oh, Viv's doing that. Moving on. When I someone else doing that i think go girl mm -hmm. good for you like so glad i'm seeing your face and you're doing that like yeah I feel like happy for them because it's an it is hard and it's 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 an achievement just to make the video and put it on your instagram well it's hard talking to videos i mean i started doing it last year because i heard 
your first 50 videos videos will be shit so you better get started and I thought <laughs> okay so I did I started and I used to make them on my hair account because I was practicing for the resilient hairdresser because I thought when I launch that I want my videos to be at least I want to be at least 30 in <laughs> you know so that they're less shit but it's, it's terrifying yeah and I mean, th there's lots of people watching here now who are probably thinking I could never make a video and I could never talk to the camera. Like I thought that too. Mm -hmm. I knew you didn't you? Like mm -hmm. you, know, you get over it really quick, don't you think? Yeah, because actually, there's there's a lot. You get a lot back from it, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe if somebody's off out in the abyss of social media did think something bad of you, well, that doesn't actually change the fact that I uploaded this video it doesn't change the fact that people other people have resonated with it mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. or, you know, it doesn't take that away the fact that you've actually done it someone said 50 i've got 45 crap ones to go through <laughs> <laughs> keep going <laughs> um so what was the outcome of this is was the life-changing moment the fact that you got used to talking on video or did you become bezies with tom connell I'd like to say I'm Bezzy's with Tom Connell. I'm quite good friends with Tom Connell, yeah. So the, the outcome for that really was that I did get invited to go for the audition, which mm -hmm. was incredible. So I went up to London with my model. I've never mm -hmm. done anything like that before. So I worked in Tony and Guy in the 90s, like we just mm -hmm. said. And you did have to do a little bit of presentation in your bar mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So, I mean, but for years, and bearing in mind, I've gone through all of this ups and downs and relationships and drama and drama and drama and lots of stuff that I had to deal with that going to go and do an audition in London was not on my radar for the 15 years before that you know yeah so off I went with my model and I was so prepared like I had practiced that hairstyle probably 200 times I'm not even joking like I was not willing to not to turn up there and not get it Mm -hmm. Because at this point, I'd put it out there to the world. Like, I'm yeah. Thinking, you know, so you brought your A game. Yeah. And it was yeah. a sense of kind of ego, I guess, and pride that I had to, like, I had to prove I, if I was going to do that, I had to actually get it, which mm -hmm. I did. Which I did. You did. But, yeah, of course I did. I turned up super prepared. <laughs> I was like, please let me tell the end of this story <laughs> better be that she gets it. <laughs> I did because I turned up so prepared yeah. like I, you know anything like that and for anybody mm -hmm. watching if you're thinking about going and doing something like that to to raise your profile in the industry mm -hmm. prepare like mm -hmm. don't just practice that hairstyle once yeah practice, don't wing it don't wing it oh my god don't wing it that you you turn up prepared and even if you do something that's not quite good enough if you're prepared they will see that mm -hmm. I'm through in your mm -hmm. audition. They fluff it all up there. Mm -hmm. on the you won't because you're so prepared. You won't make a mess of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that that stands out. And other people, so let's talk about, like, say, Tom Connell. Like, as if Tom Connell goes on stage or does anything without research and being prepared. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. those types of people don't get to where they are by winging it. So they can recognise when no. someone's prepared. Well, also, this is that, that winging it things about not taking hairdressing seriously as well, you know? And that's the thing I feel quite passionate about is that I want the industry, I want some people in the industry to take themselves a bit more seriously. This is a proper job and a proper career with a brilliant career paths. But yeah. you've got to take yourself and your skills seriously. For sure. I absolutely you know? agree with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that and th doing doing that and taking those steps for me definitely changed my career. Yeah, and yeah. did it make you feel a bit more confident in just going for it? Yes. Yeah. In yeah. general, yeah. like you take a chance and yeah, it can pay off. Like people like you do sometimes get the jobs. You know, like yeah. we have that thing of who I'm never going to get it, but someone has to get them. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. exactly like and if yeah. you. You're definitely not getting it. Mm -hmm. you know, you <laughs> going to be in it to win it. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't make that video and post it on your Instagram, mm -hmm. you're not going to get it. You're not going to get no. on it. So, and I think even if I hadn't have got on the team, I think the experience of 
actually put myself out there. And it, it's that thing of like, putting your right self out there mm -hmm. in front of everybody you know and all of your followers on Instagram that, you know, this is what I want. And even if I didn't get it, I think still that would have been a turning point for me. Yeah, I see. It was a win-win really, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, just the t you decided to take your career seriously. Yeah. And I think, you know, and but even just the making the videos, I mean, who knew that's what you'd be spending your days doing? Yeah, no, look what I do. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> talking to the video or to the camera i'm like literally now i think can i have a conversation with somebody face to face anymore i just don't know <laughs> I'm like, I'm i don't think we'll have to worry about it for a while <laughs> no, ease ourselves back in yeah and then that obviously just learning that skill um has helped me a lot through lockdown and helped me build a, another business and mm -hmm. you know but it's given me a bit of a springboard mm -hmm. into something else which is mm -hmm amazing mm -hmm. don't you think it's funny how you look back and you can see how all the pieces were building together but at yeah. the time it can feel like you're just flailing around and mm -hmm. trying stuff but you look back and you see oh it was all leading towards where yeah. i am yeah that making that one video was the mm -hmm. time because my career i i've always been a busy and successful hairdresser and you know working in a beautiful salon managing a team but like that's that was cat that was and that was due to continue like there was no going to mm -hmm. be change with that but for me if i hadn't made that one video then i wouldn't be here talking to you now yeah oh i love that working in my salon in pen i wouldn't no oh so, and um, yay you yeah no. good for you for going for it isn't it god yeah. look back and think yes i did that yeah and i think if anybody could take something from this chat is to just get over the fear of yourself because those thoughts in your head are only thoughts in your head you know don't mm -hmm. let that self-doubt or oh i could never do that because you know mm -hmm. oh I'm, my accent's awful or <laughs> or you know this is that was mine you know i'm putting myself on video i was like i couldn't be more mank you know how is that gonna go but you know people always say to me you're so northern northern it's so funny I <laughs> and i just it. think it's fine yeah that's the that's the thing that people say to me when i'm really encouraging them to talk to the camera and put their face on their instagram so they say oh but i've got an awful accent or you know i'm not confident like you and mm -hmm. i'm like really honestly it takes practice it's like the first time you walk out on the salon floor to do a haircut mm -hmm. so you you aren't don't know how to do that haircut then you're not a hairdresser at that point you're just you've just got a piece of paper to say that you know i'm competent yeah i can cut your hair basically mm -hmm. i'm but, safe yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know how to wrap up a hairdryer wire so i won't trip over <laughs> and that's basically it isn't it but then yeah. you you spend a couple of years improving um and making mistakes and learning how to actually be a hairdresser mm -hmm. and it's exactly the same thing with making your videos or talking mm -hmm. to you, whatever it is any any new skill that you're trying to to develop yes exactly the first 50 times are going to be awful mm -hmm. and then you get better at it but you've got to start. I mean, when someone said that to me, your first 50 will be shit, I just thought, well, you've got to get on with it then. Mm. You've got to crack on. Yeah. You know, I can't just... And, like, I can't bear the thought of being in the same position in a year's time and being mad with myself. I can't, I can't bear that anymore. That's what drives me forward now. I just think, oh, no. I yeah. can't be sick of myself. <laughs> oh, maybe I need to start running then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like tomorrow i'm gonna to start exercising yeah i'm definitely gonna start exercising tomorrow and then exactly what you just said just made me think in a year's time i'm gonna still be saying this how am i still yeah gonna... i can't bear myself i literally can't bear myself i watched this brilliant documentary recently uh, and this guy in it says just aim for one percent better every day and That's... i loved that because i thought that is attainable yeah, can you just be one percent better at whatever it is tomorrow you know yeah. Yeah. So just put your trainers on tomorrow. You don't have to leave the house. <laughs> okay, okay. No, just put your trainers on. That's an improvement. And then the next day, go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day I will. One day I will. 
<laughs> so let's do number three. So number three, I think you've partly answered this a little bit already, but let's talk about whose career do you admire? Oh, so I'm not going to say Tom Connell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say Tom because he's just, he's a really gifted hairdresser and I do admire his career. I really, really do. But there's someone in the industry that I admire so much and that's Ashley Hodges. And mm -hmm. do you know I've, what? Yeah, I've just, I've just discovered her because she's on the hair.com team. Yeah, is this the one? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the treasurer for the fellowship and you know, she's 30. She's 30. And she's like a global educator for Davines. She, oh, I wish I'd had that focus that she has. I really, yeah. I really admire her for mm -hmm. her. She's so young mm -hmm. and so accomplished. And, but she is, she's an amazing young woman. Oh my mm -hmm. God, I admire her so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something to be said, isn't there? It's like, how does she pull that off at that age? I was busy trying to sort out my problems. You know, like my energy was all going on dealing with my mental health and the drama so I wasn't focused on my career I was focused on feeling okay in the moment yeah well, you know and Ashley has has been through periods like that where she's taken time out of, mm -hmm. out of hairdressing I, I just she's she there's something about her and I just can't put my finger on what it is but she's she's like she's like a new spirit do you know what I mean mm -hmm. she's like this very new generation of people who are connected emotionally like she's very emotionally mature mm -hmm. and she's connected very emotionally to the rest of the world and oh, just a, just think she she's very special she sounds like uh, i just feel like oh she sounds like a great person to be she, around yeah her she, energy infectious yeah do you she, like do you what? feel better when you're around her yes. you know yeah, yeah. Oh, she sounds great yeah and she's fun like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm probably I sound like she's super serious she's not super serious mm -hmm. fun like she's got she's just got something about her and I can see why she has had these incredible opportunities because she's a really hard worker she's mm -hmm. super focused she's like very very caring very in touch with other people's needs and mm -hmm. very in touch with she sounds very emotionally intelligent she is she is she's incredible mm -hmm. I just, I just wish that I'd had 10% of the focus that she has at mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. She deserves to be where she's at mm -hmm. in life because she not necessarily has been completely 100% focused on career, I don't think, you know, but she's very aware of herself and she's got, she's just ace. She sounds great. I want to talk to her. <laughs> yeah, you should talk to her. I think her would really get on because... She's just so in tune yeah. with her self, I think. I, I, I want to know how people like this tick. You know, like, well, I'm, like, I'm full of questions for everybody. I managed to get it to five. But, you know, like, when I, when I hear about interesting people, I just want to, like, know what they're doing. Like, what are you doing? And what can, how can I copy it? You know, how can I take a little bit of what you're doing brilliantly and put it into me, you know, to sort of improve by that 1%? Yeah. I think mm. what she does for herself is she gives herself a lot of time. So she she has, I think she has really good boundaries probably around her own space and time. Mm -hmm. And she's always learning. So she's always learning about, you know, we might, might be talking about something political or she's, you know, with any kind of big movement that happens, like Ashley possibly won't make a big statement about it but she's absolutely 100% learning everything like mm -hmm. she's, she's doing the work she's not making the statements like, she's making the changes yeah and I really admire she that sounds fab mm -hmm. I like the saying have you ever heard this one uh, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with yes I have mm -hmm. yeah. and Ashley Moore she I, I just I just think I just really admire yeah her, her work ethic it sounds like yeah. And just, yeah. 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 Really special. Ooh, she sounds fab. I'm going to pay more attention to her. Yeah, I do. I started following her recently. She's, I she was is. like, let's have a look at this person. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So next question, question four. What have you learned the hard way, Viv? 
what did I write down for this? <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten. What did I write down? Like that. I've got a few to choose from. So I have learned the hard way how to say no, and I'm st still not very good at it. Mm -hmm. So we're mid-learning. Yeah, I'm 42. Like, now is it the time to stop to stop just saying yes through sheer flattery. And when we had our conversation talking about this, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so basically, right, if you flattered me and then asked me to do something, I'd say yes, out of just the fact that I was so flattered. Mm -hmm. so, but then that, what has happened by doing that is that I've said yes to everything and not everything serves me. Mm -hmm. So... And, and then when I was on this journey of like trying to raise my profile in the industry, there I was saying yes to absolutely everything and I'm absolutely killing myself. And mm. the only person I was saying no to was my husband who was mm -hmm. saying, you like me at home more. Mm -hmm. Like you're away. I was away um, probably every, two, two weekends in every month. I've got small children and I'm mm -hmm. married. And, you know, he's like, you can't, keep doing everything and I was like yeah I can I can I can and he's like you need to stay at home more you know we miss you the, we're, we're not so we're not thriving without you here like this is tough mm -hmm. for us and but the only person I was saying no to him was him mm -hmm. and, and every other person who'd come along who I felt you know was maybe higher up in the industry or could could help me get to where I wanted to be I didn't know where I wanted to be where did I want to be? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I just kept getting flattered and saying yes. Mm -hmm. So actually, I've been doing I've been doing a bit of work with I have a life coach, and mm -hmm. that was one of the things that that she said like what What do you feel like you really need to get from this? And I was like, I just need to learn how to say no to people who are outside my house. Do you know what I mean? I need to start saying yes, <laughs> yes, yes to people who actually are in my life and, and want me to do well and not people who just want something from yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like look after the ones who are going to look after you. That's it. That's first, it. First and then see what's left, not the other yeah. way around. It's not like I said yes to like 100 opportunities. I mean, it could have just been two opportunities that that were a little bit too much for me, that mm -hmm. struck me too far, that meant that I wasn't really perhaps looking after my responsibilities in the salon. I definitely wasn't looking after my responsibilities at home. And then I was like running off here, there and everywhere. And actually, what, 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 yes, it can, it, yes, it's worked in a certain sense that it, I've got more contacts, I've got more experience um, and I've, I've had some great opportunities. And, but, Right now, where I'm at now, I, I definitely, now I look at things and I think, okay, does this serve me? Mm -hmm. Does this, this opportunity that's been presented to me, just because they've, if they've flattered you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. Mm -hmm. So now I think like, you know, does this serve me? And it, is it going to take my career into the direction I wanted to? Or is it just doing something for them? Mm -hmm. So now I've learned when somebody says, hey, Viv, I think you're great. Do you fancy doing what, whatever? I go, let me um, have a look at my diary. That's what I always say. Let me have a look <laughs> at my diary and see if I can fit that in. Now, mostly I want to say yes. Mostly, mo like my natural instinct is to say yes. Mm -hmm. Like straight away because I'm scared the opportunity will, will go or if I don't say yes, I'm not. This is the big chance and you're going to miss it. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like it may be impolite to, to say no. Mm -hmm. So instead I just say, let me have a look at my diary and I'll see where, and I'll get back to you. So then I can just, even might only just need one evening or one hour or whatever to just, I don't even do a big process of thinking. I just let it sit with me for a bit longer. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than mm -hmm. my reaction being, yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm a nice person, I'll do oh. it. I'll do that. I'm really polite and I'm so helpful and I'm reliable and I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to make you happy. Instead, I just have let it just sit with me for a bit. And like I said, I don't have a big checklist of thought process. It's not that at all. It's literally just, I think I just take it and let it be. 
And then I think about it again tomorrow and be like, just do, do I want to do that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do want to do that. Or no. You know. Yeah, I think it's important, isn't it? It's the taking the beat, you know, just give, you've got to come up with a standard line, I find, <laughs> yeah. that yeah. buys you a little bit of time. Yeah. You know, this is what I've, when I was a therapist, this is what I would say to people. I say it to my mom, because she's the same. You've got to have a line that buys you a bit of time. That's mm. it. Yeah. You know, um, that sounds great. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. Anything that just buys you some time. Because yeah. you, when you think about it, you know, if your first thought is always the people pleasing one if you're that way inclined it's and me. then you've got to see what's the second one though the one that goes oh, i'm tired of working for free yeah you know yeah. there's yeah. you know i think there's a time to pay your dues and then there's a time to be paid yeah yeah you've got to decide when that is i've done the working for free and it's not to say that i won't ever do jobs for free again because i probably will but they but they'd have to be serving me in a way that like it's got to be mutually beneficial i think yeah and it to give up my time for free yeah it could just literally be that i'm like it makes me really excited or happy mm -hmm. or, the type or of it's work. serving the sort of person you would like to serve yeah you know if yeah, it's for I, young people i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> i'll do it <laughs> yeah I, i'm just such a people pleaser and it hasn't always gone well yeah, you know, I think actually, do you think hairdressers are people pleasers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think most people who go into the service industry are. The reason we're good at it is because we're that way inclined. Yeah. You know, we're good at going above and beyond. And, you know, so many of the hairdressers I speak to in, uh, in my coaching work is because they're very good at going above and beyond. And now they've got nothing left. Yeah. You know, or they can see how that's not really serving. They're now starting to feel a bit taken the mickey out of. And the, and the resentment starting to build. Yeah. You know, and... So that's, that's what, and that's how everything I've ever done when it, it like, when I've said so, yes to something that I don't maybe really want to do, or perhaps it's getting to a point where I'm like, I don't want to be doing this anymore. I don't actually know how to get back out of it because I haven't set my boundaries around it. So then I'm like, then I just start to hate it. Yeah. And I meant it. And I start to think of all the reasons why I hate it, why I don't want to do it, mm -hmm. why it's taking the piss out of me, mm -hmm. why, like, and then I just feel not happy about the whole situation. Mm -hmm. I start looking for reasons to go, that's, that's, that's the reason I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not because I didn't set my boundaries out. No, it's because they're no, terrible people for asking. Not them. It's not them because I have led them to believe I'm like willing to do anything and walk the end of the earth for you and oh no you don't need to pay me that's absolutely yeah. fine I would do this for free forever for you like I've, <laughs> I'm just like willing to do this for them forever so it's not fair on them that then I start to resent the situation I'm in mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. their fault that that I start to resent the fact that I didn't set some more clear boundaries around yeah. how mm -hmm. I I'm willing to be available or where, what I'm going to do or, you know. And, and it's much, sorry, carry on. No, sorry, no, I'm finished. I was just going to say, it's much harder to put your boundaries in later than at the beginning. You can't because then you look like a psycho. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> like you're changing the rules. And yeah, so no. sometimes you have to sort of suck that up for a while and learn. Yeah. And yeah. Then put your, you know, I always call it setting your stall out. This yeah. is how I work. This is how I do things take it or leave it, you know, in the nicest way possible. Yeah. i tell you what's interesting is uh, I'm, I was part of a coaching group over the summer uh, and all those girls still talk to each other now. And one of the main things we talk about is that we're all, we were all hairdressers and we're all building businesses still within hairdressing, but basically educating, doing what you're doing, what I'm doing, what they're doing. Uh, and now all our boundaries are being re-challenged because yeah. we've got on our hairdressing boundaries sorted, um, but now we're discovering our boundaries aren't as good because we're doing something new and we haven't figured that out yet. And I think that's it. Your boundaries need to evolve. Yeah. And we get caught out when we're doing something new. Yeah. And I think that's what you're describing. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I think that it's it's not always that you can go in with this set of boundaries around it, but like you, everybody has some basic some basic things that they're kind of you know that we all know like 
I couldn't be called upon to go to London tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. like, if I was called upon to go to London tomorrow and I did it, then I haven't set the boundary that that's not going to work for me. Yeah. You know, so then the next time I'm called, to, called upon to go to London tomorrow, and then I say no, or I feel I can't say no because I did it before. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. 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 Boundaries, we're not necessarily talking about big, uh, big, massive statements, are we? We're just no. boundaries around how much time you have spare for this other project, how mm -hmm. much notice you would need to be able mm -hmm. to go somewhere, or even, let's say, how much you would accept to be paid or not paid. Mm -hmm. This, and yeah. if, you never, if you never have the conversation about money and then you realize you're not getting paid, like down the line, then more fool you because then you resent that you're doing this for free, mm -hmm. you but you didn't ask. <laughs> it's hard, and it's, it's such a thing to learn the hard way, isn't it? It's about money, mm -hmm. why? What's wrong with us? I don't know. I mean, people think hairdressers so, will do anything for love, yeah. I you still know? find it very hard to ask about money I really really do mm -hmm. like I, really, I that's a major challenge which I probably have to work on next year <laughs> we'll I put do. it on the list we'll put it on the list yeah. it is it's hard isn't it it is hard but we're gonna have to do it yeah we're gonna do it grown-ups are <laughs> we're grown-ups we are allegedly yeah. so okay last question what advice would you give to your younger self looking back okay so this one your party friends are not your friends. Ooh, I like it. Your party friends are not your friends. I remember learning this lesson. It was, it was hard. It's a very hard lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. You learn that the hard way. Yeah. Like your party friends, you see them on the weekend, you all like party together, you have these great experiences that bond you all together, you dance together, you get the euphoria together, mm -hmm. you stay talking till... 4 a.m., 6 a.m., into the next day, it carries on. You like yeah. this bonding experience together, which is, you know, probably not legally fueled, but you know, you have but this, good at the time. You know, yeah, you have this experience with these people and you feel so connected to them. But then on Wednesday, when you need a wardrobe moved, you know, and you can't do it yourself. You don't feel you know them well enough to call them up and say, hey, mm -hmm. oh, do you think, mm -hmm. would you give me a hand with this? So like, then you end up searching for that feeling again next weekend to mm -hmm. feel that connection with people again. And then you feel all the emptiness all week. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I'm, for some people out there, like if you, actually, if you actually have still got those friends now when you're older, at, back through the partying stage, and if they're still your friends, you're so lucky. That's that's mm -hmm. lovely. But I don't think that's the case for many of us. No. I mean, I have a few of my friends I parted with because I had them before that. Yeah. So that was a phase of our life. But so many people I met partying in my youth. And it's just like, I remember noticing that they just weren't there for me when I needed something. And I was heartbroken. It's hard. Because I really didn't know that they weren't my friends. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, and it's devastating. Yeah. I've been reading so many messages. People are just going, oh, this is true. Nancy Stripe said, yeah, my wedding was full of them. I only know five of them now. Right. Isn't that crazy to think, right? And, yeah. and I necessarily, that, like, like, if you think of everybody at the party, I don't think all of them are still friends and you're the only person who's not. Like, it, it was a phase in our life. Like, I wish I'd known that, though. Because I do have really good friends who maybe didn't do the partying with me or maybe did dip in and out or whatever. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I have got a couple of really good friends left over from that time, which I'm really, really glad about. But it just, I just wish I'd known not to put so much time into that, I guess. Mm -hmm. and actually to look at the people around me, maybe, oh, this is, it's easy to say looking back, isn't it? In your mm -hmm. form. To, to, yeah tell your young self something it's really really hard because I wish I'd actually realized my family more you know realize those yeah or or mm -hmm. even that I worked with or I wish I put more time into them because 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and they're the more reliable ones, really. I think that I often say, you know, like um, when I was a therapist, for te- I was for teenagers for a long time. Uh, and, and like they're always falling out with their friends and stuff, you know, drama, drama. And I was like, but I bet there's people just on the periphery who want to be your friends, but they're just not quite cool enough. You yeah. know, they don't want to go and get pissed or whatever. But they're, they'd be great friends. Like, who are you not? taking full advantage of in your life they're hanging out they want to be your mate but your attention is too bit much on the party and the cool and you know those people are often there but you're just not even looking no you're distracted by the wrong shiny things yeah (laughs) whatever those are i wish i could go back and 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 i was thinking because when i was thinking about this question i was thinking you know, I think, well, maybe you might say, would you change it? Would you go back and change it? And most people would say, no, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, I would. Mm. If I'm honest, I would, Mm. I would change it. So I had a great time. I went to some great clubs. I had some crazy conversations with some crazy people. Has it served me right now? Like, does it enhance my life here today? No. 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 Do you think that you would have just... Like, I, I like what you're saying, because I wouldn't have ever thought of asking if you change it, actually. But I think, would you just think I might have just put a bit, saved a bit of that energy and put it into some other people as well? Were you just, like, totally invested in the party? I was all over the parts. <laughs> <laughs> like, this oh. is why I'm not like Ashley, you know, because I didn't get that focus or anything till later. I was too busy on the party and feeling good and moving around and all that stuff, you know. So I didn't get to the focus yeah. and the sensibleness till my late thirties. She goes, she has fun and she has parties and stuff, but she obviously has it in the right quantity. She can like her take... ratio is better than ours. Yeah, it's like all over. Well, the... ours was. Mm. I was all over the party. I mean, now I'm like 10 o'clock in bed, but do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I do, so I do wish, like, yeah, I feel, I feel like I spent my whole of my 30s, like, paying off and catching up on my 20s. So I just partied my whole way through my 20s. And um, then I spent, I kind of almost spent my 30s, like, paying off the debts and, and righting the wrongs. And now I'm in my 40s. I'm like, oh, hello, new life. Like, I'm free of all of that. Do you know what I mean? I'm not... In my 30s, I was definitely trying to kind of catch up in my career Mm -hmm. and off a lot of debt. Like, I got myself into Mm -hmm. all situations. Mm -hmm. Me too. (laughs) Back with the same person. (laughs) (laughs) We certainly went on the same roller coaster, I think. Yeah. You know, I was irresponsible, you know? and 30s are very productive decade, you know? 30s is mainly when people turn up for coaching. It's when they're at that phase of, Oh, she's here, Ashley. Um, been about <laughs> her ears have been burning. <laughs> <laughs> I think people in their thirties, it's about pushing forward, taking stock. Is this how I want to live? And I find that that's the age. But then forties becomes a little bit more introspective, mm. and a little bit more like looking at what you've got. You know, being a bit more hashtag grateful. You yeah. know, but thirties is pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah, for sure. And for me in my 30s, it was all about like, have, I, I was having to undo a lot of like mess that I'd made. So I was having to mm-hmm. clean mess. It was a lot of housekeeping that I had to do. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd had bad relationships and I've got a 20 year old son as well. So like, oh, yeah, I, I was a party, like I was constantly partying, but I was also trying to be a mum as well. I was kind of, I was in a situation where myself and my ex-husband we used to, Jack went to Matt 50-50, so I'd have every other weekend off motherhood, which was horrendous for me. But like, you know, so then when I got into my 30s, I started to think I need to, not I need to, like I had to, I had to sort this out because it was into like, this is is not right anymore, you know? Yeah. But a lot of time spent just, trying to just clean up the mess I'd made. I, I, I remember set, when I decided to sort of give this a rest, it was because it wasn't working with my mental health. I could see it wasn't working. And I remember just saying, don't be the last one to leave the party. Yeah. You know, it's not a good look. Yeah, and I was the oldest one there still partying and everybody <laughs> like, I'm not that old. But do you know what I mean? When you start to see like, 
uh, the other people who are younger than you, like drif drifting off out of the party scene and maybe like sorting their life out of it. And you're like, what? Mm. <laughs> what? I always see it, you know, when, you, when I see stylists and the only people they've got to go out with is the assistants, I think it's time to go home. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, I, did. I didn't learn that. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think it's so good that you said I would go back and change that because I think that's really brave because I think people's standard answer is, but I wouldn't be where I am if I hadn't and it's led me to where I am. But I think it's really brave to say, actually, I'd like to have been a little bit better than that. Yeah, I, wish, I would love to go back and change that. I, I, I really would. I really would. I think I'd be, um, I probably would have got to where I am now and, I, and I'm certainly not like at the pinnacle of my career I feel like I'm very much at the start mm -hmm. so but I feel like I would have got there a little bit sooner so maybe I could have had a 10-year head start on this like yeah. you know respect Ashley so much and because yeah. if I had ha had a, just a little bit of the focus that she has mm -hmm. uh, maybe I would have kind of got to where mm -hmm. I am that bit sooner yeah. um, and like I said this isn't this isn't the pin the pinnacle for me. Like for me, I feel like I'm at the start of my journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like people used to always say life begins at forty and all that kind of stuff. And I used to just think that was such a weird, a weird expression. But for me, certainly, mm -hmm. I feel like I've I've become myself. I've grown into myself. Like these other yeah. people say, Oh, but I still feel like I'm twenty one. I don't actually. I think I I've don't. was always <laughs> 42 year old woman <laughs> and but I was trying desperately hard to be more like out mm -hmm. there and a party girl and young mm -hmm. and free and reckless but mm -hmm. actually I've met myself yeah and do you feel like you've got that focus now yes yeah oh, god yeah oh absolutely. yeah absolutely I mean I still love a party <laughs> yeah <laughs> dream as I used to be no me too I still like a party and I like a chat but you know I'm I, I certainly won't be the last one there anymore I'm probably one of the first to leave now oh no I'm, I'm <laughs> one of the last ones you there. told me you were the last one to leave the party when we chatted I, on the phone. I just I just love people you know I just love connecting with people and being mm -hmm. with people and I and I, I do love I love a laugh so yeah can't help well I've had a laugh today <laughs> I've had a great time. I'm like, look at us over an hour again. <laughs> well, I don't think you can do this in any less time, can you? No, no. I think it's, I think 45 minutes minimum really to get, you know, a good chat. And that's what I really wanted to get really was, you know, my plan with this five questions is to find out about what really makes people tick, you know, and I want people to learn that other hairdressers go through the same things. You know, and so I want people to go, oh, I feel like that. Oh, that's okay. It must be normal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think so much of what I did when I was a therapist was normalizing how people felt. Yeah. People would come and say, I feel like this. And I'd go, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. And I think I kind of want to do something similar where, you know, I got such great feedback last week from the first one was people saying, oh, I liked that you two talked about how you felt because... I feel like that. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yes. And I've already seen in the chat, everyone is just going, I feel like that. Look. Can I touch this screen? I'm so scared I'll turn yeah. it off, babe. You tell me. Okay, so I, I will. You do it, because I'm terrified. <laughs> Freya says, hello, Freya, darling. Thanks for watching. She says, I think as hairdressers, we thrive off drama of a hectic salon for a certain time. And then for her, going self-employed was the emotional and physical break. Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, so true. I think, I think what, sad, what saddens me about the industry in some ways is that so many people are going self-employed because it's the only way to take control of their boundaries and their mental health. And I think that's a shame, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think I, I don't want to see the decline of salons. Yeah. And I want people to find ways to stay. That's what Freya says after. She says taking control of your career is the most empowering thing. So yeah. can they take control of their career while still in a salon? Well, I think it's up to this. I think, this, I think salon, I think the culture comes from the salon owners. Yeah. You know, so I think we need to see salon owners prioritizing people's mental health and 
you know, looking after their team in a different way. You know, it's yeah. great making money and all that, but I think there's a little piece missing. And I think if we could find that, salons will thrive, you know, yeah. but I'm worried that everyone's just going self-employed. Yeah. Because they're knackered. So Wendy Owen ran away to Cornwall. <laughs> she did. I know Wendy very well. <laughs> so, hello, Laura. She says, I was running three separate businesses. Oh, wow. On top of being a single mom. And at one point, eventually it all came crashing down. And I literally stopped everything and changed my life. So extreme. But it felt like I've lost, I haven't got the end of that. Sorry. Oh, I've lost it. I might get brave and touch the screen. Oh, look. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm like terrified I'll turn the live it's, off. As we um, save this live, we lose the comments. I know. And I love the comments, but I can't always, uh, you know, I have to focus on what you're saying. Or I lose thread. Uh, loves the idea of a salon mentor for, yeah, so do I. I think that's something mm -hmm. like... Like we said earlier, didn't we? We said, if you have your health and safety officer and you send somebody on a first aid course, mm -hmm. be able to bandage somebody's knee if they fall over or burn themselves. But what if somebody's having like some real issues with their mental health? Like, yeah, after that. Like and I think you don't have to have someone who can give out advice in the salon. You just need someone who knows where to signpost them. That's the word we would use. You know, mm -hmm. have a list of places you can send them. Yeah. Have you know, have salons, arrange deals with local councillors, you know, figure it out. There's, I think there's many things we could do. So I would really like to see that. I should focus more on this idea. <laughs> I, I, it's an amazing idea. I mean, obviously, it's something that you would need to get paid for. But I wonder whether out there, there could be some sort of sponsorship or something. Maybe mm. one of the brands might want to like pick you up and be like, you know, when you are part of our brand, you know, if your salon has our products, you also get this opportunity mm -hmm. to counseling or this mentorship, you know, for your team. Yeah. So yeah. surely the brands out there are thinking in the bigger picture as well. They've got, mm -hmm. you know, got more money to invest in things like this, this than us. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, back down onto the salon owners at the end of the day, doesn't it? Like, you know. I know. And I don't want to, oh, hello. I dropped my phone. <laughs> Um, I don't want to pick on the salon owners, you know, because I think they're trying really hard. Uh, but I just think, I, but I think they're overwhelmed. Yeah. And I think when people are overwhelmed, it's very difficult to do anything different. I mean, this is essentially a lot of people who come through my, through my coaching, they've got really good ideas of things they want to do, but they're so burnt out, they can't put them into place. So what I do is, get them in a place where they've got their energy back so that they can get on with what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I send them to a different coach then I'll send them to a business coach or whatever, but you know, you've got to get the good foundations to be able to put your big ideas into place. But that's why you're doing your big ideas now because all your foundations are good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know? So, I mean, I've, I've taken a massive leap of faith. Well, it's not a leap of faith because I've, it, I know it's, it's, it's a good I, solid decision yeah yeah and I have decided to leave the salon so I'm going into co coaching full-time and my coaching is different to yours so mine is support mine is totally like on the vanity vanity side of things so well I like your coaching I find it invaluable <laughs> as you'll see from the mental messages I leave you, <laughs> yeah, you are I was jealous of your reel <laughs> yeah. and like I've got nine quotes now what am I gonna do I was like oh it's okay <laughs> yeah I yeah. went off piece and I'm gonna have to bring it back it's not working yeah but like for me because I because I do love being around people and like obviously being that party person that I'm always looking for I just love to be around people and love like Sorry. sharing with us when I start to kind of do more and more in the industry people are like how do you do this and I was like through Instagram and they're like what do you mean through Instagram mm -hmm. I'm like you know I've got mm -hmm. all the opportunities that I've ever had through Instagram and they're like what you get me to watch too. me through Instagram and I'm like no, seriously like I, I'm gonna teach you how to use your Instagram properly yeah. and 
whatever it is that you want to achieve, I promise you, I can get you that. I can help you get there with Instagram. Mm -hmm. you know, it gets you well, I've done a couple of Instagram courses and I would say that your bootcamp was the best one I've done. It oh, was that's so good. good because a lot of the ones I've done in the past weren't, they weren't, I didn't get to talk to somebody or they weren't doing it live. So sometimes they're a little dated, just a tiny yeah. bit, you know, because it all moves on so fast. And what I loved about yours was that it was happening in the moment and yeah. you're exactly up to date because it is changing so fast nowadays, isn't it? Even since I did boot camp, which was, what was that, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. like, new features have popped up on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, so part of the coaching group, so I have a new coaching, it's kind of doors are open now, but it starts again on the 18th of January. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. Yes, I can't wait as well. So there's a few spaces left, not loads, but there are a few spaces left. Mm -hmm. And But like part of the coaching group is not only do I take you through like step by step on how to use and understand and work Instagram, work it, like work it for your own benefit. But as soon as there's a new feature, you're going to see me like you are never going to be thinking oh, what's that there on my phone yeah i will You've I... pre warned everybody yeah. this is coming that's what i because yeah. it was funny you were saying oh this is coming in but you might not have it and i didn't have it and literally the next day it happened and yeah. i didn't freak out because you warned me yeah. and i was like that's okay yeah you're all right <laughs> something new like i have to then i have to figure out how it's going to work for us as hairdressers. So mm -hmm. um, there's lots of uh, social media courses and coaches that you could work with, but not all, like I work with hairdressers because I have experience in the hair. Exactly that. So, and that's why I do what I do for hairdressers. Yes. Yeah, because I yeah. understand hairdressers' problems and you understand how Instagram is needed for hairdressers. And I think that's the brilliant niche. Yeah. And I think that's why your course was better than the ones I've done in the past because they were generic. Yeah. And yeah. yours was directed at my life. Other people join and I'm like, yeah, they could. Like, it's up to them whether they want to or not, but I'm not changing my content to see mm. people in other industries because I'm a hairdresser. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what I teach isn't stuff that I've read in a book. Well, it is and it isn't, if you know what I mean. But it's... Yeah like I've mm -hmm. I've tried and tested it like I yeah know. teach what you know yeah and I understand the industry I've been a hairdresser for ever like <laughs> my clients think I, I understand the you know the limitations around actually creating content and how difficult it can be to you know when you're a salon owner and you're running a salon you think well I've got to do social media as well like when am I going to fit that in mm -hmm. you know so I don't understand this is part of the job now it is the job got updated i was thinking the other day this needs to be taught in hairdressing college yeah it definitely because this is part of the job now i don't know how you can be a successful hairdresser if your instagram is rubbish you know yeah. like uh, yeah absolutely so i think this needs to start becoming part of hairdressing training yeah along with many things you know but like mental health social media money management yeah. i think all these things need to be part of hairdressing training yeah. social media is, is marketing so it's mar it's marketing it's how mm -hmm. it's seen by to clients who you want to come to your salon so it's it's marketing it's a way of advertising yourself you know so it's it's not scary it is you, you can learn how to do it you know i do the 12 week course so by the end of the 12 week course, you are able and confident and you understand Instagram mm -hmm. so much to the point where you can actually then share that with your team or mm -hmm. other people, you know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't end just after the 12 weeks. You can, I have like a lifetime group that you are become part of. It's called the hairdressers social club. Cause I love mm -hmm. everything about a party. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, haven't let that go too much out of my life. So you then, you do the 12 week course and then you have lifetime access to the hairdresser social mm -hmm. club, which again, that's where you will always have the first hand information. When any, mm -hmm. Whenever anything happens, you'll know, you'll see me. Yeah, I mean, I first became aware of you because um, a hairdresser that I do some work with, I just watched her social media change and I was like, oh, and then I kept seeing, and she was like, she's amazing, babe, she's amazing, babe. And so I started paying attention and that's, and then I messaged you and I was like, I've got a question. 
so, so I have 66 people in the group in this 12 week course and it's amazing they like now are getting like noticed by other people in the industry they're getting mm -hmm. uh, people getting in touch with them they're not even getting in touch with the other people people getting in touch with them saying you know there's opportunities for you perhaps to come mm -hmm. work out on free mm -hmm. dance or um work with us on would you like to come and assist us on a photo shoot mm -hmm. uh, uh, people who are doing lives with like Aveda. I mean, that's amazing. Like of Aveda is active. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. They do education opportunities with their brands. Their profile has just literally just gone boom. Mm -hmm. I can tell when someone you've coached someone now. Can you? Yeah. I, when I see certain Instagrams, I think they've been on Viv's course. I can just tell. That is interesting. Which I think is brilliant. Yeah. It's like you've got a brand in a way, you know, but I can see. Particularly yeah. now I've been on the inside a little bit, you know, and I've done the first bit of your course. I can now really spot it. Yeah, it's interesting. Which is good. It's interesting because um, actually boot camp, I've, I've saved that boot camp and actually people can just buy, mm -hmm. buy it and watch it again. So of course it's not live, but they can watch the boot camp. Yeah, can. if they missed it, if they missed the party, they can get in late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go to my Instagram, you'll see. If you just go mm -hmm. to my, in my bio, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because I don't focus very heavily on aesthetics, like colours or patterns or, um, you know, even aesthetics massively. I don't, I don't really focus on that much at all. Like, it's an element of making your Instagram look good. It's an element. But for me, that's not what it's all about. Like, I want people to be to learn how to post with intent mm -hmm. you know so it's like content with like intention so always knowing what the final outcome is going to be not just going oh it's nine o'clock i better post something <laughs> you, know, you know what i mean because yeah like, i do that 10 minutes or 15 minutes that you spent doing that just because it's nine o'clock was actually a waste of your time and you're better would have been better off not Mm -hmm. So I, I want people, and I, I teach this as a huge part of the course, is to understand that, firstly, before you even post something, what do I want to achieve with this post? Like, mm -hmm. what's the outcome? So could it yeah. be, you know, where, where are we going with this? Yeah. You've got an intention. Then mm -hmm. actually the posting of the whole thing, much better. And, and you're using it to connect with your audience better. Mm -hmm. I fully agree. I couldn't recommend your course highly enough, Viv. I think it's just brilliant. Uh, and I, I really wish you well. Thank now you. you've taken the leap. We could go off on a whole new... I know. Do you know my phone is actually flashing at me saying your battery's going to die? <laughs> so I'm like, we better wrap this up before it just cuts us off. <laughs> Thank you. But, oh, thanks so much for coming, Viv. I've had a brilliant time. Me too. I knew I would. I know. <laughs> Great to talk to you. Yeah. Love Thanks so much. Thanks for everyone for listening. Bye.